This is the magic of coppicing. I cut all of these trees to the ground this past winter. This is one summer's growth. And this is also one season's growth. We planted this as a new tree this past winter, so it's about seven months old and nowhere near as vigorous. The difference is very interesting. Now this tree is four years old. Last year, I cut it to the ground. The amazing thing about that, which is coppicing, is that you now have roots in the ground that can supply the nutrition and moisture that the growth needs to do this. So if you compare this to the one-year-old shoot I showed you a few moments ago, it's incredible what happens. Now willow is a good choice for us because it really loves but thrives in really wet ground, which is what we have here. It also doesn't mind having wind, which we also get a lot of. So hopefully our coppices will continue to thrive and provide us with a huge amount of free firewood. And it's also eco-friendly. This is the tree I coppiced in my video last March. I've cleared the grass away from the bottom so we can see what's going on. I think we'll need to move this big white dog as well. Come see. When I cut this tree, I tried to cut it as flush to the soil as possible. Doing that causes it to throw up new branches from the roots. That has the effect of widening the base of the tree, making it more stable, which is incredibly helpful on a windy site like ours. The cut face here is beginning to get covered over by all this new growth. That will then protect it from future infections. This is another good reason why you want to start a coppicing tree when it's fairly small. A year or two old is ideal. So this tree is doing really, really well. This is a four-year-old uncoppiced willow tree. So you can see the kind of difference you get between coppicing it and not. One of the main benefits of coppicing a tree, of course, is you get loads of shoots instead of just one main stem that then does a couple of branches. Now, these trees get to about this kind of height. I'm nearly six feet tall, and it's what, two, maybe more than a bit, two of me, so about 12 feet tall. The base is about two inches in diameter. The one we were looking at a moment ago is about three quarters of an inch in diameter already. So you can see the huge benefit you get from coppicing. It really is an extraordinary technique. Now we're going to cut this coppice in stages so that you get different heights and different stages of development which then attracts different sorts of wildlife and should be fantastic. So looking forward to doing that. Now here's an interesting situation. When I coppice these trees I did it in two stages. I cut it fairly high to begin with to take the weight off and make it easier to maneuver. Then I cut it flush with the ground. This is coppicing. There's another technique you can use called pollarding where you cut the tree much higher. The goal there being, if deer are around, they can't reach up high enough to eat all the new shoots that are growing. I seem to have created a mini pollard. Now this is about knee high. And as you can see, it's created huge amounts of new wood. And you might think that this is a fantastic technique to get more and more wood, and it probably is. The difficulty we have is that our soil is mostly clay and silt, and it's always soaking wet. So it doesn't have a lot of strength to it. I'll show you in a moment, we have a tree that got pollarded, and you get a huge amount of growth at the top, which then gets caught in the wind and blows the whole thing over, which obviously isn't very good for the longevity of the tree. So this is an interesting experiment and uh, it might suit you in your situation. So here's the example of a pollarded tree that's currently falling over. It was cut about here. You can see the multiple branches coming off of it. The previous owners didn't have a deer fence and so they pollarded it to protect it against roe deer, which can eat the fresh little shoots up to about a meter and a half high. The difficulty is you get lots of large branches at the top. Now, if you thin them, you can make the top less heavy. So that is one solution to enable you to get firewood from a pollard like this. However, this tree is busy falling over and we really don't want it to do that. So this winter, when it's gone dormant, we're gonna cut it down to ground level and try to turn it into a coppice. I say try because oftentimes larger trees simply won't make the conversion and they just fail. Often they'll also only shoot after the first year or two, so there's a bit of a delay involved there as well. Another problem with it is you then have a very large cut face, which invites infection and will then kill the root. So it's a bit of a risky thing to do, um, but we don't want this tree landing in the field over here, so that's going to be the next big project. Now here's something I'm very happy about. This is a little baby oak tree, and it's planted here probably by a bird, a jay. They like to plant acorns, they then come along in the spring and eat the fat leaves that are the first ones to come out of the acorn in the spring when they're growing, but oftentimes they miss them and you get trees. Now we have about two and a half acres over here separated off for natural region. We've not planted any trees on it at all. And our hope is that the jays will do the same thing up there and we'll get loads of oak trees. Also, because in our deer fence, we have badger gates. The badgers come in and root around the ground looking for whatever it is they're hungry for and disturb the soil, meaning that there's a space 
an open space for seeds to land on, perhaps willow seeds, to then take root and grow. Now, we only have this here because of our deer fence. If the deer fence wasn't there, the roe deer would come along and just eat that because they really like them and there would be no oak trees. So I'm really hopeful that we're going to have a wonderful naturally planted native woodland just over there. This is our new coppice. These trees were planted this past winter, 2023, and they're doing really well. It's now September, so the leaves are changing due to being autumn. They're not ill. Willow is an amazingly easy tree to plant. You just take a branch and push it into the ground, if your ground is soft enough. If it's not, you can dig a hole or use a pinch bar, a bit of metal to make the hole first and plant them that way. Now these trees are nowhere near as big as the trees in the previous field were at the same age. You can see in this photograph from August 2020 that the trees are taller than me. So why the difference? The difference comes down to mulch. That summer, nearly every weekend, cutting grass and mulching it around those trees to keep the weeds down and give them the best start possible. And it really paid off. These trees, however, are a little bit different. If you have a small number of trees, you can mulch them, but we have 1,200 trees in this field, at least, and mulching them just isn't gonna be practical. So we're having to rely instead on these, which are biodegradable mulch mats. They're 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter, pegged down with bamboo pegs. They do help suppress the grass somewhat, but it's nowhere near as good as a big mound of grass like we did with the previous trees. But it all has to start somewhere, and I'm sure these trees will grow and be beautiful and provide us with endless firewood. So I hope you can have this kind of success and uh, thank you for watching.